Okay, back to my turn. So let's see what else we might do. So remember, actions. Choose and play, purchase and play a card, resize a speech, acculturate, or expand. Well, I'm going to go for... I still don't have any um, DNA on my species that's going to allow me to expand, so I could go and buy some. Uh, interestingly, this hibernation comes with this acorn, which is an instinct icon. Remember, I already have the exclamation mark. That's here. So if I bought this one and, and uh, mutated into an interspecies communicating animal that, that does seasonal hibernation, then I could grab this culture, agriculture. And that seems like a, a good idea. So let's, let's do that. Let's buy this guy. It's not perfect because it's not helping me get any more animals or adapt to these environments that are around me. But until I get some genes, I'm going to struggle with that anyway. Yeah. Okay, let's draw a card. And this time it's Sculling Tail. And again, it's draw and place two new era tiles. Alright, so we're having some good luck. That's cool. Right, two. First one is an immigrant. This time it's a herbivore. Size two, protoceratops. So let's find an environment for him to live in. It's Arctic. So it's going to come in one of these biomes. Um, it's, look, it's got BGG. So there's, this one needs two Bs, this one needs an I. Okay, here's one. This one needs two Gs. That's the grazing uh, DNA. So we're going to put this here. The Protoceratops is happy living in the lichen tundra. Next, we have a biome, and it's the Larch Forest. We just find the lowest climax one, and the five. That's going to go here. That's giving our R2 Tusker, another environment in which it could potentially move into. So let's do his turn now. He's got one B. Remember the, the logic, he tries to acculturate first, but he needs two of these, these icons. He doesn't have two, he's got one. And then he will expand into the lowest climax, habitable biome in range. So within three, anything that's just got one B as a requirement, we've got this one and this one. This one's got Climax 24, this one's got Climax 15. So this guy is going to expand its species into the seed ferns biome here. Remember, his size is three, so they can reach up anything up to three spaces away. One, two, this one's only two away. Because of where the greenhouse gases are, these empty slots on land, so they can walk across them, no problem. He's a terrestrial animal. So all we do is we grab one of their wooden tokens of the same species, dummy's always the same species, and then he goes. And he can survive here because it's got a B, all it needs is a B, and he's got the B. That's the browsing gene. Dummy player's now got two animals on the board, we've only got one. We're trailing a little. Back to me now, and I've got these two instinct icons. Natural history one, the acorn, and language, the exclamation mark one. And that's going to allow me to acculturate the agriculture culture. And that's pretty cool because what it means is that any empty slots next to our homeland become what's called habitable farms. And that would be pretty cool because if there were empty slots around, <laughs> this is the downside, all four slots uh, North, south, east, and west of my homeland are filled with biomes, so they wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to turn them into habitable farms. But basically, they kind of replicate your home biome. You can just go and inhabit them. Um, but okay, that would be good. So all I'd have to do to acculturate is grab one of my um, archetypal species. This is the species I'm going to develop the agriculture culture for. And that means then that these guys could move into empty slots next to my homeland. Um, I'm not going to do that because there aren't any empty slots. So what I'll do instead is, I think, increase my size. 
the switch blade claw up here, which is the only one I can take because it's free, requires size 2 to 5. I'm size 1 right now, so I couldn't take that. But on my turn, what you can do is you can move one space on the size chart, left or right. Okay, so I can move from 1 to 2. Now my next turn I could move back to 1 or up to 3. The other good thing is that I'm with now within one size of the 2 Tusker. Remember when we were looking at the Velociraptor and whether the 2 Tusker was a suitable prey, I said that when an immigrant comes in they assume the same size as the prey that they're, they're feeding on. Not so for the playing animals. Um, in order for a predator to prey on another animal, it needs to be within one size of it. Okay, so I need to be size 2, 3 or 4 in order to be able to prey on this guy here. Down here, at least I'm too small to prey on him. Likewise, if I'm up here, then this prey is too small for me. I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's like a cheetah chasing an ant. It's not, <laughs> it's not going to happen. So let's change my size. So as my action, move from 1 to 2. Job done. Now it's the 2 Tuskers turn. They've got two animals out here now, and that means that, okay, they can't acculturate, they haven't got the, the icons, but anything within three range of either of these that needs just a B, and we have this one here, that will happily support one of their herbivores, so they're going to move in here, and they've got three animals on the board, things are getting serious for us, because now that they're here, they could expand into this Thick out thicket. I think that's the final biome with just a single bee on it. That's not necessarily a bad thing if we can get some um, predators out, because I could potentially predate these guys now. Because they're not speedy, they're not nocturnal, they don't have any S, N, A, or M DNA. I could send my my species up here as a predator. It's an interesting option now that I'm the right size. Why don't we do that? Why don't we start spreading and predating these these two dus these two tuskers? So yeah, for my turn, I'm going to grab one of these animals and I'm going to head into this biome here. It's within range of my parent. They're size two, so I can move up to two spaces. One, two. I'm going to go into the predator zone and predate these guys. Remember, as long as they don't have more size um, than, than I can accommodate, speed, nocturnal, aggression, or marine, then I can happily predate them. So that's good. That's cool. I've pulled one back. And I can keep doing that, really, until um, I've filled all these slots up. Problem is, I've got to compete with this Velociraptor up here. Because on the on his turn now, he's going to move down into this sick ant thicket. They can move through uh, biomes with other creatures. Right, so now he's heading in here. I think I'll continue to predate. So I'm going to predate here. Expanding here. <coughs> so they've got four, I've got three. I don't think there's anywhere else that these guys can move into now. So they're going to have to look to the display to try and grab a card. And the cheapest one they're going to get is this one, the Delam, Delam Don't Check, uh, Cheek Teeth, Delam Don't Cheek Teeth, W-shaped teeth used by shrews, moles and bats. And that's the size one, you can't take that one. Alright, it's going to have to be this one, the Tripod Stance. Okay, walking plantigrade with soles of feet flat on the ground, sacrifices speed for stability and weight bearing. Okay, he's size 3, so this one's fine, he's going to take this one, but he's going to have to pay 2 genes to do so. 1, 2, and that's good for me, because now I can start pulling these genes out, give me a little bit more, few more options. So this is going to give him a second B and a hand icon. The hand is manual dexterity, but he's already got a hand, so that's fine, that, didn't, that doesn't give him a pair. Uh, but he's got two Bs now. And that's going to help him because he can move into places like here with this double browse requirement. Let's grab another card. We've got only left three, two left after this one. Okay, this time it's a genotype card. 
All right, so it's not a mutation. It still goes to the display. We're going to the, the dummy player never takes these genotype cards. He only ever takes these mutations. So I'm going to place it. There's two ways up. If a herbivore takes it, then the top, this bit, this brown bit, the mammalian bit, takes effect. The pangolin is here. Well, I'm going to place it this way up because if the, the dinosaur player, which is me, takes it, then they get this bit in blue, the dinosaur part, the, the atosaurs. Okay. So I'm going to place that here. Just like the mutation cards, they have this this text in blue, which is the event. It says, draw and place to new irritants. Not very exciting, but we'll take that because it makes the game easier. Right, first off, we have an immigrant. It's a herbivore in the tropics. And that's good, because we want this guy to start competing with, um, with these herbivores and potentially offer new food sources for me. Um, they do have an A and they're marine. So they're looking for a marine environment in the tropics. There's only one, and it needs one M. He's got two. So this guy is going to happily head in here. Okay. Next. Another marine. This one is a biome. It's a marine biome in the horse latitude. They're all filled. So what we need to do is look for the one with the lowest climax, which is this forest here. This petrified forest, and this is going to bump this guy out. That's pretty cool because that herbivore is potentially spreading in there. Now this guy, well, this um, this forest has has been overrun and inundated with water and becomes marine. This goes to the tar pit, and that's our first biome in the tar pit up here. Now that's important. When we get to the end of the round, end of the period, and we do our scoring round, the person who scores most highly is going to take anything sitting here as victory points. They're not going to take them all, they're going to take 50% of them as it goes, rounded up. So until there's things here, no one's going to be scoring any points. So this tar pit, these, the winner takes these, places them in a player area, what's called their, their fossil record, we call it, their fossil record. And each one of these is, is, is a victory point, basically. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave that there as a victory point to be claimed at the end of the round. We're kind of waiting for some kind of climatic disaster to happen because we'd like to um, get some of these slots emptied and uh, develop some culture, but that's not going to happen until some environmental event is going to impact the biomes that are on the map. Let's take a mutation instead. And the one I want is the one that costs nothing because I've got no genes to spend, but I'm going to next turn because I take this and put it in my supply. And what we're going to claim is the switchblade claw, a disemboweling claw, which is going to make us a pretty awesome predator. We're size 2 currently, and it needs size 2 to 5. That's great. And it gives us this A, this armoured this armored, uh, piece of DNA. What's interesting here is that this is in, in this red colour as opposed to this blue. These are what we call roadrunner DNA. Roadrunner is adaptations to catch prey or run away from prey. Okay, so in this case it's the armoured one, A for armoured or aggressive. For the first time you acquire one of these Roadrunner pieces of DNA, you take the species involved, our archetypal one here, and we place it on this Roadrunner track up here. There's Speedy, Amphibian, N, A. Right, so Speed, Marine, Nocturnal, Burrowing and aggressive or armoured. And we have to place it in the A slot because this is the A Roadrunner DNA. And this helps us then uh, compare species with species, but it also potentially awards uh, different instincts. So if you end up AAA then you get the natural history instinct. But there we are, we're here, we've got an animal on this track and the other thing you can do is take one of these little placeholder tokens and just put it on your species to remind you, and it's just a reminder really, that you're currently A for aggressive or armoured. Actually as it's kind of pinky red, I'm going to place it up here at the top of my top of my stack. It's just a quick reminder really that you know when people are looking at your your species they you can see 
that you do you do have armoured. You don't have to decipher this or look up at the track. It's just a quick quick reminder. Okay, so we've taken a mutation. Let's draw a new card. There's only two left. And this one is hooves. Size one to four gives you double S, so it's a nice speedy mutation. Ah, uh, we've got erosion global cooling is the effect. So this one is a little bit more um, more of an environmental impact. It says if the greenhouse is 800 ppm or more, remove the highest climax orogeny biome and lower the greenhouse. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. Orogeny, orogeny biome, basically the one in the mountains. There's three in here, there's one at 70, 94, and 69. Okay, it's this one. Um, disaster, burn, spike. This is the one that's going to go, and this is going to head off to the tar pit. So there's two in there now. That didn't help us, didn't remove anything here. Um, but now we lower the greenhouse gas. Okay, this is going to go down from 800 to 400. Now every time you move the greenhouse level, then remember if it's going down, the planet's getting cooler. If it goes up, the planet's getting warmer. So the planet's got cooler, and what that means is all the animals want to migrate south, south to warmer climes. But not just the animals, it means the plants and animals. All these, all these biomes, all right? these things like termites that, that are building these termite mines, the, the lycopod meadow, everything's going to move south. You know, plants and animals are going to migrate south. As we're moving south, the best way to start is at the, the bottom. Everything, including all the animals that were in that habitat, so anything in these three, the two triangles and the square in the middle, everything will move one spot down. Anything on the bottom of the map isn't going to move, okay, because it hasn't got anywhere to move to. Likewise here, this is the, the lowest point of the track, so this isn't going to move. But this one, including its animal, is going to move south. Okay, so we've got everything moving south. Everything moving south. These two don't move, there's nowhere south to go. Same here, everything moves south. Okay. And this is going to start to wreak a little bit of havoc with what's going on on the board. Oh, these guys don't move. Sorry. These guys don't move. Anything that's in these um, uh, these orangey ones, they don't, they don't move. They stay. Okay, so that's right. Yeah, yeah, that one doesn't move. That one doesn't move. The net result of this guy not moving down is that we ended up with two biomes in the same slot. And all you do to resolve that is the one with the lowest climax goes extinct. So the Dawn Redwood Forest can't compete here with the Alpine Liverwort Meadow. It's got a 40 climax, this one's got 70. This one's going to go to the tar pit. And the same is going to happen with these other ones here where we've got multiple uh, biomes in the same slot. So here we've got the, uh, the ray fins and here the meadow. This one's 14, this one's 26, so these guys are going to go extinct. We've got the horsetail, swamp, and the termite mounds. These guys are going to go extinct, so 27. Um, the cycad thicket is going to go, because it's 41, this one's 58. This is kind of fortunate for my guys. And then one more here, we got the Coastal Kelp Forest, 44, the Raithins, 46. This one's going to go extinct. So we've got four more biomes going to the tar pit. Now we've suddenly got a nice big stack of victory points to be won. And things might have just swung in my favour. Let's see what's going on down here, because now we have two herbivores in the same biome, and they're going to have to compete with one another. As it goes, the competition here is going to be very straightforward. It's on our home, bi home biome. Normally what you would do is check the DNA niche. Now the niche here is just the red colour. The red colour is, is what colour I am. Whichever animal has the highest uh, niche value, in this case who is, who is the most red, I'm the most red, he's guy's white, 
will survive and the other guy will go. But let's say we were fighting over this term of mind here, then whoever had the most A DNA would be the one with the best niche for that environment, and that one would survive and the other would go. All right? But we're not, we're competing over this one. This guy goes extinct and is removed from my home biome. Let's place this back in there, supply. I think that's it. The only problem now is we've got to make sure that this predator can happily prey on this herbivore. The problem here is that this carnivore and this herbivore are both the same species and cannibalism is not allowed. A carnivore cannot prey on a herbivore of the same species. What that means is this predator is going to disappear. Interestingly, if this herbivore that was competing here, if it could actually prey on the, the herbivore it's comp competing with, instead of going back to the supply, it could have just moved up into the predator slot. As it goes, this guy can't because remember my um, my species has the A DNA, this A Roadrunner DNA, which means he's, he's too armoured or aggressive. So this guy can't 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 prey on on this herbivore. So this guy would be just going back to the supply. The same actually applies if you're in an environment that supports burrowing or nocturnal animals. Um, you know, if you had two two herbivores here, for example. This one supports uh, a regular herbivore plus a burrowing. Then, if this guy outcompeted him, then this this herbivore could have moved down into the rooter triangle if it had the H DNA. Okay, so just remember that when you're competing, you could potentially move into one of these other slots if you've got the right requirements. Okay, I think that wraps up my turn. We'll finish off two Tusker and then I think we'll wrap up this episode. And he's looking for a habitable biome. I think it's one of the double Bs. Yeah, we've got one here and we've got one here. And it's a lower climax one. This is a 10. So this guy is going to expand into this, this swamp here, this coal swamp. There we go. It's not going well for us at the moment. We've got one, two animals on the board. They've got one, two, three, four. And there's only one card left in this period. So we've got a little bit of work to do. Especially when they've got one more habitable biome to move into. Right, join me next time and we'll see if we can't try and do something about this.